Now we recently did a video on how to create custom template filters in Django. I want to move on here and have a second example and we're going to look at Markdown in this video. So what we basically want to do is have some Markdown saved in the database and we want to pull that out and we want to render it to HTML that appears on our web page. So we're going to explore that in this video. Now as always if you want to support the channel check out the coffee link that we have just below the video and if you're finding the content useful consider joining the channel as a member we've just opened memberships as well that would be greatly appreciated for anyone who's found this content useful. So without further ado let's dive in and we're going to look at Markdown in this video. Now if you're not familiar with Markdown I'm not going to give a very detailed approach here or detailed overview but let's have a very quick look at some examples. So for example you can define headers here using hashes and you can define things like lists as well. So here's examples of those in Markdown and the equivalents in HTML and how the rendered output looks. So you have ordered lists, we also have unordered lists that appear here with bullet points and we can also have quotes as well in our Markdown as well as code blocks and much more. Now Markdown is very useful and you'll commonly see it used for example in readmes and github repositories. So let's take a look at one, we're going to look at the htmx readme, so let's go to htmx's github repository and if we look at readme.md you can see how this looks on the actual page after it's been rendered but if we look at the code here we're going to see the markdown. So for example here is a header, it's got two hashes and that's the introduction and we also have links appearing on the page as you can see and if we look below here we also have a list and so on. Now what we're going to do in this video is create a reusable template filter that will convert basic markdown into HTML that can be rendered on a Django web page. Now I'm going to open the project. We saw in the previous video the example with student grades. So if we just refresh our memories for a second and go to index.html, we had this content here and we defined this grade class template filter. So by using this we were able to clean up some rather ugly code and it now looks nice and concise. We're going to do the same in this video for the markdown filter. Now for the starter code we have a few things here, we have a markdown post model and that has content and this is the field that is going to store the markdown inside the database. And there's nothing special about this field, it's just a models.txt field. We also have a date time field for the time that the post was created as well. And we have a single URL in this application now for the posts and that maps to this view at the bottom of views.py. Very simple at the moment but we are going to extend this. And finally we have posts.html, if we look at that, that is currently an empty template. So let's get started, in views.py what we're going to do is we're going to fetch all of the markdown posts from the database. So at the very top of this file from core.models we will import that markdown post model. And then inside the context here we can add a key of posts and we're going to map that to an ORM query so it's going to be markdownpost.objects.all. So let's say we have many posts in the database, this is the query that's going to get all of those markdown posts and add them to the context for this posts.html template. So let's go to posts.html and to start with let's extend that base template and define a content block in this and we can end that block just below here. Now we're going to create a template for loop in Django so we're going to iterate over each post in the markdown posts that were passed into that context. And this isn't going to look very good here but we are going to render it using the markdown to html template filter that we, that we will define in a second. So we're going to take the post and we're going to output its content to the page for now. And underneath that I want to have an hr tag that's just going to have a horizontal line separating each post from the post below. But we only want to add that if it's not the last iteration of the for loop. And there's a special syntax for this, a special property we can use. So we're going to check if it's not for loop dot last. So only if we are not in the last iteration of the for loop can we add or should we add the hr tag. So this is a special property if you are in a template for loop in Django and this works in Jinja 2 as well. You can check if you're at the last iteration of the for loop and similarly you can also check if you're at the first iteration. Now in the for loop we might not have any posts. What we can do in Django's templating is add an empty block for that case and then here we can just paste in a paragraph tag telling the user that they have no posts. So let's start up the Django server here and we're going to go to this page and we're getting a template syntax error here. It looks like I've not closed a tag here and this is on line 10 so let's have a look at what's going on. This should be end if not end for so let's replace that and well done if you spotted that. So let's save the file and we can go back to this page and we can see of course at the moment we don't have any posts. What I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to copy some code and this is from the htmx markdown. Let's copy all of this and I'm going to add that to the Django admin. 
So we're now on the Django admin, let's go to the markdown posts section and we're going to add one here and let's paste in that content that we've copied directly from HTMX and the readme. Now if we go back to the application to the slash posts page, you can see what is output here. So we have that text content that's being stored in the database via the text field on the Django model. But of course this is not formatted. This is just raw text and there's no idea or no inclination on how to actually convert this to HTML. So it just looks like a bunch of text. Our template filter that we're going to write is hopefully going to fix this problem. Now to do this we need to install something and that's the Python Markdown package. And what this is basically going to allow us to do is convert the Markdown to valid HTML. So for the features here there's international input, extensions that you can use and under output formats notice that Python Markdown can output documents with either HTML or XHTML style tags and there's also a command line interface for this package. Now how do we install this? Let's go to the installation page here. It's as simple as running pip install markdown. So let's go back to our VS Code terminal here and we're going to paste that command in and install that into the virtual environment. So while that's installing, let's go back here and we're going to look at an example of how to use this. So let's go to the index of this documentation here and if we go to library reference, let's have a look at this here. Python markdown is intended to be a Python library module used by various projects to convert markdown syntax into HTML. And here is a function that we have. So we import the markdown package and we call a function called markdown and we pass in the text string that represents that markdown. And what we get back here is HTML. So this package provides two public functions. We have the markdown function and also the markdown from file function. So if you're reading from a file, you can use that one there, but we are going to be reading from the database and passing that string into this function. And we want to do that in a template filter and that's going to make it reusable across different templates in our website. Now we're going to use the template filter in a second, but to start with, I want to show how we could add this as a model property. So let's go to models.py and this is just going to be a demonstration of how this works and we'll move it into a template filter. So we're going to define a property on the markdown post model and let's call this method rendered markdown and that'll take self as a parameter. At the top here, we're going to import that markdown package that we just installed and then inside the body of this property, we can call that function and it's the markdown.markdown function and we can pass in self.content. So remember our markdown is in this field. We're passing what's coming from the database here on a model into the markdown function and that should convert that to HTML. Now to render this, we can go back to post.html here. Now we're just directly rendering the content at the moment, but instead what we can do is we can re reference this property here, rendered markdown. So let's change it to that. And we also need to add the safe template filter here. And that's going to tell Django that this HTML that we have here in the rendered markdown does not require any further escaping. So it's basically safe to output that as HTML. Let's test this out. If we go back to our application, which is on this page here. Now, when we refresh this page, we're going to see hopefully something different. But of course, we do need to start the server at the bottom. So let's do that just now. And then we can go back to this page. Let's refresh the page. And unfortunately, we now have none appearing here, which is not ideal. Now, I think there's a simple problem here, and that's that I'm not returning anything from the property. So let's go back to models.py. We need to return this value from the markdown function in order to actually use that. So let's try this again. And you can see now that this does look a bit better. And of course, we can restructure our page layout to make this even nicer. One thing that I will note is that in the previous video, I used Tailwind CSS for some styling. And you can see these here. I'm going to remove Daisy UI and Tailwind from the head tag. And let's go back to this page. The reason I'm doing that is because Tailwind is overriding the browser's default styles. So in order to get this looking the way it should look, without any further customization and without Tailwind overriding those, we need to remove Tailwind from this project. Once we've done that, when we refresh the page, we get this output here and we can see the headers in the markdown. We can see the links very clearly to some of these pages here, as well as the list that appears at the bottom. Now, while this works, having this in the model is perhaps not ideal. So we have this property in the model, but what this is doing is essentially taking the content and that's coming from the database and it's changing that content to something that is used in the presentation or the view layer of the application. And I say view, that's from maybe Laravel, but in Django that would refer to templates. We don't really want to be mixing database logic and models with presentation logic. So I don't think a model property is necessarily the best place for this. So let's just cut this out of here. And what we're going to do now is finally create our new template filter. And that's going to be inside the template tags directory. We already have CSS filters. We can now create a new one. 
and we'll call this markdown filters.py. Now just like the CSS filters from the previous video, in order to mark this as a valid template library, we need the top two lines of code, so we're going to paste these in here. We're importing the template object and instantiating a library and setting a variable called register, and we can then use that to register our filter. Now again, for us to render the markdown, we will need this markdown package. And then we can take register here and we can create a decorated function. So register.filter is our decorator here. And then we can create a function here to represent our template filter. It's going to be called render markdown. And that will take a piece of text as an argument. And our template filter is simply going to return that same function markdown.markdown .markdown, and we'll pass the text into that. So we now have this template filter available called render markdown. And the good thing now is that this can be reused anywhere in our project. Now after we've added the new template tags file here, we're going to restart the Django server just so that it picks up those changes. And we're going to go back to posts.html here. And let's load our template library at the top. And we called this markdown underscore filters so we can load that. And now we can use that filter in this file. Now what we want to do here is we want to pass the content into our new filter. So under this here, I'm just going to rewrite this under and we can remove the line above in a second. So we're going to refer to post.content and then we're going to reference our filter which is called render markdown and we can then add or chain another filter onto that and that's the save filter. So now that we've done that I'm going to remove this line here and we can save this and let's go back here and see if this still works and you can see that it does actually still work. And one other thing we can do instead of using this safe filter every time we can actually move that into our filter as well. So if we go back to markdown filters we're going to bring in a function from Django called markSafe and this explicitly marks a string as safe for HTML output purposes. So this comes from this module here django.utils.safe string. So go to the top of this file here and we're going to import that from django.utils.safe string import the markSafe function. And all we need to do now in our actual filter at the bottom is pass the HTML generated from the markdown function into the markSafe function. So that's what we had before that generates the HTML and then we can pass that into MarkSafe in a single line of code. So hopefully this is still going to work and notice we don't have the safe filter anymore. So if we save all of these files and go back to our application, when we refresh the page, you can see that everything is still working. So we now have a simple reusable filter defined here that's going to take some text and that text is assumed to be markdown text and it's going to convert that markdown to HTML and as I said, this is now reusable. We can reuse this anywhere on our site that uses Markdown. In our case, the Markdown is coming from a model.txt field here, and that's called content. You can also have this coming from files on the file system or in cloud storage or anywhere else. And while this is simple, there are ways we can extend this. And if you're interested in more videos, let me know in the comments. One example would be adding extensions for code blocks and much more as well. So if you're interested, let me know. Thanks again for watching. If you found this useful, check out our coffee page just below the video. And if you want to be one of the first members of this channel, check out the join button just below the video as well. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.